Jesus said, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God has set God's seal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, dear people of St. John's. Good morning. We seem to be on a roll here as we move together through the long green season of Pentecost. Last week was the familiar gospel passage about the feeding of the 5,000 with just five loaves and two fish. And this morning, we hear the familiar I am the bread of life passage from the Gospel of John. This time in the church year has sort of a Jesus's greatest hits feel to it, doesn't it? Now, some of you may remember that 50 years ago, in 1974, McDonald's came out with what was then perceived as a controversial advertising campaign for its quarter pounder hamburger. That brightly colored ad included a banner headline stating in capital letters, man does not live by bread alone. This commercial message is so different from what Jesus tells us, isn't it? For Jesus says, I am the bread of life. That's what he tells the crowds who have actually gone so far as to get into boats and follow him across the Sea of Galilee to Capernaum. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me, Jesus says, will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The flippant, irreverent McDonald's ad of half a century ago completely missed the point. And deliberately so, because it was an ad, after all, designed to sell a product. Its message was that we all need more, more, more. Its message was that something as basic and sustaining as bread just isn't enough now, is it? There has to be more, a lot more. That was the basic message that that ad tried to convey. You don't want a basic hamburger, you want one that weighs a quarter of a pound with lots and lots of condiments. And let's not forget that McDonald's special sauce. But that's the antithesis of what we, as Christians, strive for. There is a deep spiritual hunger implanted in every human heart that differs greatly from physical hunger. People yearn for a deeper connection, an eternal spiritual connection. And when that is lacking, we'll seek other means to fulfill it. But Jesus, Jesus said he came to be among us so that we might have life and have it abundantly. If you think about it, Jesus often started with people's basic, simpler, lesser needs, and then progressed to the spiritual. For example, in the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at the well who is drawing water in the heat of the day. And Jesus starts with that basic need alleviating her thirst. But then he uses it to forge a relationship with her that ends with the woman reconnecting to God and to others in her community. So what Jesus is really sharing with her is living water. And in our gospel reading for today, which is taken from the sixth chapter of John, 
Jesus has already met the immediate needs of a whole host of people the previous day. For using just a little fish and bread, he had fed their physical hunger. But these people sense that they need something more, and so they continue to seek Jesus out. And he tells them, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Jesus points them towards their spiritual hunger, which is what he really wants to fill. Those folks two millennia ago were all created in the imago dei, the image of God, created to love God and to love others as they loved themselves. Just as each are each and every one of us gathered here in this sanctuary and via the internet on this warm summer morning. Love, that is the real nourishment that they need for themselves and to share with others. And love is what we all need too. Jesus compares this spiritual nourishment to the original bread from heaven, manna, with which God miraculously fed the children of Israel for 40 long years in the Sinai Desert, a practically uninhabitable wasteland. <coughs> we just heard that story told yet again in our Old Testament passage for this morning, taken from the book of Exodus. This manna from heaven was the daily bread that would appear anew each morning with enough to last the day and a double portion for the Sabbath. So Jesus compares the daily bread of manna, which God gave in the desert, to the bread of life, which God offers in Jesus Christ, saying, whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus offers the kind of nourishment, the soul sustenance, which goes to the heart of our most basic human need to fill a spiritual hunger. We are all beloved children of God, and we were all created to be in relationship with God. And without that connection, we can feel empty, bereft, hungering for something more. It is an easy move to connect Jesus, referring to himself as the bread of life, to the Holy Eucharist, which we will soon celebrate together, both here in person and virtually. For in the mystery, of the Eucharistic feast, we recall the Last Supper as we eat the bread and drink the wine. And in so doing, we partake of Christ's body and blood. But let's not forget the bigger picture here. This interaction in today's gospel passage comes when Jesus still has two more years of ministry ahead of him. There is much more time left in Jesus' earthly ministry before he gets to that last meal with his disciples, the last time he breaks bread on this earth. John's gospel makes clear what the other three gospels only hint at, that the Eucharist is not about Jesus' death alone. Jesus' self-giving act in communion is not solely concerned with the Last Supper, the cross, and the empty tomb. Rather, Jesus' whole earthly life, not just one or two events, is what leads to what we know as the sacrament of communion. Put differently, 
our faith as Christians is not in Jesus' death and resurrection alone, but in Jesus' entire life, from the stable in Bethlehem to the cross at Golgotha and beyond, far beyond. Beyond to an empty tomb in a garden, beyond to Jesus' appearance to his disciples, and beyond to his ascension to heaven where he is seated at the right hand of God. Everything Jesus did, who Jesus was and how he acted, is all part of God's ongoing revelation to us. We cannot separate one part of Jesus' life from the rest. Nor should we have a Christian part of our lives separate from the rest of our lives. We, as believers, are to take Jesus' whole story, the entirety of his life, from the crash to the cross, and make it part of our whole story. If we decide to take Jesus' whole story and make it part of our whole story, it involves so much more than just hearing the word. It requires both word and deed. For example, during the rite of baptism in the Episcopal Church, we do not simply hear of Jesus' baptism, but water is actually poured into the font and then upon our foreheads as a sign that we are united with Christ and with each other through baptism. We don't just hear the story. We actually get wet. And in the Eucharist, we don't merely listen to the words, take, eat. We actually get up from our pews and come forward towards God's altar in community to take and eat. And it's not just the bread that we take, bless, break, and give. God took Jesus' whole life, blessed it, broke it, and gave it. To the 5,000 people gathered to hear Jesus speak so many centuries ago, to all who continued to follow him, and to all of us. As Christians, we are to let that story of God's love for us take us, bless us, break us, perhaps, at times, and then give us back to the world. Jesus wanted those who followed him, after having their fill of fish and bread, to discover real spiritual nourishment so that they would never hunger again. Yes, one is fed through the Eucharist, but this too is only part of the picture. Our Sunday worship, as wonderful as it is, is intended to be just one part of how we are fed spiritually. Common worship in church on Sunday is meant to be an important part of one's spiritual sustenance, yes, but it will never sate our hunger that is our whole plan, if this is our whole plan for feeding our spirit. Fortunately, the Episcopal Church has a centuries-old norm of daily prayer that is well-suited to filling this void. The daily offices of morning prayer and evening prayer, as found in our Book of Common Prayer, are a wonderfully enriching daily devotion. When praying in this way, together with the daily scripture readings, one is better prepared to meet whatever may come in the day ahead or to process whatever has happened in the day that has just passed. It is not that troubles and hardships never happen to people who pray and read their Bible. 
It's just that those who marinate daily in prayer and who sometimes stew in and struggle with scripture can be more connected to God as revealed in Jesus Christ. And then, whatever may come in their lives, they can call on that connection, that reserve. They can draw on that spiritual nourishment. For those looking for an easy way to get started, there is the very helpful forward day by day, which in booklet form or online, there is even a forward day by day app now, offers a brief daily reflection to accompany the daily scripture readings. And when I arrived this morning, Exhibit A, I noticed the copies of Forward Day by Day laid out on a table in the narthex. The Forward Day by Day booklet offers the same readings as those used in our daily office. Either way, one spends 15 to 20 minutes out of each day recentering and grounding our lives in the core of our being with the God who made us and redeemed us. There is no better way to nourish our spiritual sides than through a daily meal of prayer and scripture reading, either individually or, as this parish does, during communal Zoom prayer time. So much of our lives are spent working for the food that perishes. We work hard to earn funds for our basic necessities, for food, for water, for shelter, plus some of the extras that make life more enjoyable and make the lives of those we love easier. But we know there is more to life than such daily routines. It's true, man and woman and all of humankind cannot live by bread alone. Through gathering here today in community, <clears throat> through private prayer and communal prayer, through pondering, reading, marking, and inwardly digesting scripture, we can all feed ourselves with the food that endures for eternal life. And then we can all joyfully receive the gift of Jesus, who came so that we might all have life, and as scripture tells us over and over again, have it abundantly. And then, after receiving that glorious gift, we can truly live into our calling as Christians and go out into the world and share it with others. Amen. Amen.